Hi, I'm Mike Edwards. The website is diydoctor.org.uk and today we are outside of uh, an airing cupboard which holds many, many mysteries for many, many people. Um, one of those mysteries is um, how an immersion heater works. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, this particular tank uh, is a cylinder rather. I'm sorry, I keep calling it a tank. Totally wrong with me. This particular cylinder is what's called an indirect cylinder. Um, and you can see more about how an indirect cylinder works on our central heating video. Um, but at the top of this cylinder, you will see um, this little piece of equipment here. And this is the immersion element, um, the immersion heater. Now, this is fed through your normal electricity supply. If you look at our um, electrical videos, you will see one on the, the different circuits. Um, this particular system is fed through its own circuit. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case, um, but this one is. And the electrical supply comes up to a simple on-off switch, which has a neon indicator light there. Um, the regulations these days are that there, there should be this neon light. Some of the older systems, you'll see that that's sometimes just a plug top um, plugged into a, a circuit. Um, but the regulations now are for um, a neon indicator, so you can tell at a glance whether that is on or off, um, and even a, even a fuse uh, within that switch, so that would be a switched fused spur. There are two types of um, immersion element. The one that goes in through the top is an 18 inch element and sometimes you will find an element at the bottom of the tank. Now this is uh, an economy 7 element, works off economy 7 uh, electricity and this will be a, an 8 inch or a 12 inch element. Now to change either of those types of element it's important that we drain some water from the tank. In the case of the top element we need to take off at least four to six inches of water um, to be on the safe side and to do that we can use the drain cock um, down the bottom um, of the cylinder and that we can uh, we can shut the water off coming to the cylinder and then drain down four or five inches of water from the top of the cylinder when we're taking out the um, element for economy seven, which will be down the top, the bottom of the cylinder, it's important that we drain the cylinder completely. Um, and we can do that by again, isolating the water that fills the cylinder up and then using the drain cock to drain the tank completely. It will normally take sort of 10 to 15 minutes to drain the whole thing down. Um, and then we can remove the, the, the element. Um, if we try to do that with a cylinder full of water, of course, we're not only would we um, not only would we cause ourselves a great deal of damage, but we would flood the house. Um, so please remember to isolate the cylinder and drain, drain down as much water as required. If we've got a fault with our um, immersion heater, um, sometimes it's the the element um, itself because this section here um, leads down to an element. Uh, which reaches into the cylinder to heat the water, much the same as a kettle. Um, if that's covered in lime scale or whatever, sometimes that, that uh, element can blow. You'll very soon know about that because it will trip just about every fuse in the house via the, the main on off switch. Um, and every time you turn something on, it will trip again. Um, and so you can isolate the, to find out whether it is the, um, the element that's gone, simply turn the switch off Go downstairs, turn your main switch on again. If it stays on, if it works this time, then you've, you've pretty much diagnosed that it is the element that's at fault. So we'll go into changing that in a moment. Uh, I've cheated a little bit and made this nut just finger tight so that we can take off the protective cap to the electrical circuit. So it's really, really important that this is turned off at the fuse board at the consumer unit, not just via the switch on the wall. Um, inside this unit we have um, the small thermostat at the top and we can set the water temperature um, via this thermostat, just a little screwdriver in there, just turn it to the required, the required temperature. 
Um, and, and that will set the, the hot water temperature for our immersion heated water. If something does go wrong and we need to change that element, um, then the unit has to come out. So the first thing that we, we do, need to do is disconnect all of the, uh, the wires to the thermostat and the element simply by unscrewing them. A really good idea is to use your mobile phone or a digital camera and take a photograph of the top of that unit before you start disconnecting wires and then you're absolutely sure that you're going to put them back in the same place. If you've got any doubt go on to the page that we have on the website called wiring an immersion heater and you'll see how the thing is wired in the first place. Once we've got those wires disconnected um, I'm going to duck out of shot for just one moment while I get a couple of spanners to show you um, but this nut obviously has to be undone and there is a proprietary spanner um, for that job. This is an immersion heater spanner and this is an immersion heater box spanner. Now what is important to remember is that the wall of this cylinder is about one eighth of an inch which is probably about three millimeters thick and in order for this nut to screw into the, into the top of this cylinder a thread has to be incorporated now that thread is only soldered into the hole that is in the top of this cylinder. Now solder is not the strongest joint in the world. So when we are um, tightening and untightening the immersion heater nut, the nut itself, when, when you buy one of these, it comes with a little fiber washer. The washer goes on underneath the nut and the nut is tightened down onto that fiber washer. Don't be tempted to use anything like plumber's mate or any other jointing compound to seal that joint because when it gets hot, that will go hard. Um, and if it's hard, um, trying to loosen this nut can easily break the join, the solder join, between the threaded section and the tank and then you really have got problems. Um, another, another good tip um, to remember when you're using an immersion um, spanner on top of that slides down because all of these cables will be gone you've disconnected those um, the spanner then slides down on top of the nut and just the same as any other valves or any other threads unless it's spe a specific left hand thread which, which these won't be um, it's right to, to screw tight and left to undo so if you imagine that you're staring at that face on it's left or anti-clockwise to undo. So make sure you know the direction you're going to turn this before you start. Put the spanner over the top and a good way to avoid um, breaking that joint between the thread and the tank is to give it what we call the shock treatment. Put the spanner on the tap, um, uh, put the spanner on the nuts, make sure you have a little bit of room and then just give that a short sharp tap with a hammer or a wrench. Um, just to give it that initial movement and you'll then find that that undoes quite easily. If it is a little bit stiff and you don't use the shock treatment, you put that on there and you're forcing it, you, you could easily again break that soldered joint between the thread and the tank. So put the spanner on, a tap with the wrench, that should free it up and then that will undo quite easily. Pull the element out, um, take it to your <coughs> plumber's merchants where you'll be able to buy an identical element and then reverse the process for, for, for putting it back together again. Don't forget to use the fibre washer and nothing else. Um, tighten the nut, don't over tighten, again, be sensible. Compress the fibre washer um, until you think it's uh, secure um, and then rewire and you will have replaced an immersion heater.